Hello everyone, in this video I'll be showing you the strongest Shadowheart build guide in Baldur's Gate 3. So Shadowheart can be one of the strongest members in the party using this build because it's going to be dealing massive amounts of damage. We're going to keep her as a cleric obviously as that's really what makes the most sense for her. As for the cantrips, we're just going to go with Blade Ward, Guidance, and Sacred Flame. Now, Sacred Flame early game is not amazing because pretty much everything has a dexterity save. And we're going to go with the Tempest Domain. This is the most powerful cleric domain because we get the ability to... Well, we get a reaction, which is nice. But at level 2, we get a channel divinity that allows us to deal the maximum amount of lightning or thunder damage. And I'll be showing you how to make this extremely strong. So... As the Tempest Domain, we get Thunder Wave and Fog Cloud. Fog Cloud's nice if you have a rogue, you can put this down on the ground and then they can hide in it. And then Thunder Wave is a pushback, so that is obviously good because you can push people off of ledges. As for our ability scores, our Wisdom is going to be one of our main stats. Constitution is going to be also quite important to us. And then Dexterity and Strength, somewhere around that would work well. You can take the Constitution down. You can also add some points to charisma if you want to take it up and go into like a sorcerer route, but or yeah, a sorcerer route, but we're not going to for the purposes of this build video. So somewhere's around there, you can also, I guess, uh, put the I guess extra points into our wisdom and then leave like constitution so we can take an ability score and improve both of these, or we can uh, leave the constitution there. The constitution amulet works really well, so you can go 15 here if you have the constitution amulet. If not, we'll go with these stats here. And then put the last two points into, or I guess that's all of our points there. And we can put the final one, maybe, um, I guess, Constitution there. So, I guess if you're dumping Constitution, we'll put the rest of the points into Strength there. So, put the rest of the Strength up, 16, 15, if you don't, and then switch Strength with Constitution if not. So, we're going to be mostly doing Casting, but you can attack with this build. So, I'll be going over the full leveling guide and then where we're going to be going in terms of our overall equipment. And I'll show you the combat guide for this. So... We have Turn Undead there, that's our second level action, but the big thing for the Tempest Cleric is Destructive Wrath. When you roll Thunder or Lightning damage, you can use your Channel Divinity to deal maximum damage instead. I can't not understate how good that is, because if you see it can deal upwards of 80 damage, it'll do that. <laughs> it's quite strong. So for our prepared spells, I think that is best to have Healing Word, and you want to have Create Water, because Create Water will double your Lightning damage. So that 80 that I was talking about will become 160, which is insane. Um, Healing Word is a bonus action heal to pick up down allies is really nice. And then Guiding Bolt is another decent one to have. So gives you advantage against attack rolls. But we're typically going to be, for the early game, focusing more so on like, I guess Guiding Bolt's not a bad one to shoot at off. And then Sanctuary is another really useful spell. But Bless, you want to have someone on your team applying Bless to everyone. However... There, are gauntlet, there is a ring that will give Bless to the whole team when you heal them, so you can go at it that route. Uh, there is a few different ways of getting Bless to the whole team. So Bless or Sanctuary, I think Command is just su such a useful spell to take. So we'll go with that for our first level, or I guess level 2 Cleric. At level 3, we get ourselves some higher level spells, and a big one is Hold Person and Spiritual Weapon. So... I have some people commenting that they don't like Hold Person or Spiritual Weapon, but the reason you'd want to use Hold Person is if you have, let's say you use Spiritual Weapon Maul and you daze a target, they get disadvantage to Wisdom Saving Throws, and then you can land your Hold Person pretty much guaranteed. Um, so with these, I would take both um, Hold Person and at next level we'll take Spiritual Weapon, because Spiritual Weapon, you can plop it down, it'll take hits for your team, so it, if at best it does nothing. The Cleric doesn't have any bonus actions, so... Uh, we'll take Produce Flame at next level. So being able to use this as a bonus action is really nice because we don't have many other options. And this is just something that will tank hits for the team. Occasionally, you'll be able to summon it in and hit someone. I would highly recommend using the Maul version of it because the Maul gets the, the ability to daze targets, which, again, you'll be able to set up Hold Person with. So a bit of synergy there. As for our feet, um, this is what I was talking about. We'll take our Wisdom and our Dexterity up to make them nice and rounded off. So we'll go with that there. And then for our next level, at level 5, we get to destroy undead. Whenever we turn an undead, it takes 4 to 24 radiant damage. And then we get some really nice spells. And we got our extra uh, spell slot there from wisdom increasing. But Spear Guardians, this is an incredible spell. Uh, so it gives 3 to 24 radiant damage to nearby creatures. So you have that running around. You become a Beyblade. You run around shredding people down. There's a lot to love with Spear Guardians. I also like having Mass Healing Word, bonus action, heal everyone, and this can apply things like Blade Ward and Bless to everyone, so that is great. And also Glyphal Warding is really nice too, so we'll take that at next level, but there's also Revivify and Animate Dead. Animate Dead gives you 
I always like to have at least one person on the team with this spell because there's going to be a ton of corpses and being able to raise zombies to take hits for your team is super useful. So we'll go with that there at level 5. And at level 6, we're going to get a few nice things. We get our Thunderbolt Strike. When you deal lightning or thunder damage to a creature that is large or smaller, you push it up to 3 meters. And we also get another Channel Divinity Charge. And this is the best Channel Divinity of any uh, cleric, so it's extremely good. At next level, we'll take Glyph of Warding, but again, you can take Animate Dead or Revivify. Uh, I just find there's so many scrolls for Revivify that I don't bother with it. Now, once we get to our level 7 here, we get a few more spells. We get ourselves Guardian of Faith, and uh, we get our Domain spells. So we get Ice Storm and Freedom of Movement, so we don't have to take Freedom of Movement. We get it right there. However, uh, Freedom of Movement is mostly just used if someone's stunned and you want to get them out of it. Like, it's not something you're going to use often, but it is useful. And Ice Storm's nice because you can create an icy surface for people to slip and fall, lose their concentration. And Martial Class, or I guess any class that slips and falls, basically loses their turn. So at next level, we're going to take Guardian of Faith. So this calls for a Guardian that attacks nearby enemies. It has 60 health, it loses 20 health per attack, and it deals 20 health damage. It's pretty good. Um, I don't see a lot of people liking it too, too much, but it's useful at times. So this is what we're going to take it. Now, at level 8, we get our Divine Strike Thunder. So, once per turn, deal an additional 1d8 of Thunder damage in addition to your weapon's damage when you make a melee attack. That's really nice. And for our prepared spell, Death Ward can be okay, but actually the gloves that I have on will give Death Ward. So, don't really... It's nice to take, but not super necessary. So, we can't even go back and take something like from previous level, like Blindness, if you really want to take it. Uh, aid can be upcasted and heal your entire or give additional health to your entire team, which is really nice. But we're going to take Sanctuary because we didn't take it for a long time here. Now, for our next abilities improvement, if you don't have the Constitution Amulet, that Warcaster is amazing because it'll give advantage on saving throws to hold concentration on your Spirit Guardians. And you can also use a reaction to cast Shocking Grasp as a target moving at a melee range, which is really nice. Um, also, like Sentinel will give you a, a reaction attack, but we already have a reaction, so. Not the most useful to kind of use up two of your reactions. So things like Alert can be really nice for a plus five to initiative and can't be surprised. I think Alert goes well on any build. But we're going to go with the ability score improvement and take our Wisdom up to 20. Uh, just giving us a higher hit chance with our spells. At level 9 Cleric, we get ourselves Insect Plague and Destructive Wrath. Destructive Wrath is going to be one of the best spells that we get level 5. It does 5d6 Radiant and 5d6 Thunder damage and potentially knocks creatures prone. Now we can go here and take things like Flame Strike, which is 5d6 Fire and 5d6 Radiant. Um, so if you know there's something weak to Fire, Flame Strike's not a bad one. We already got Insect Plague. Contagion's okay too. You can use Contagion outside of combat and it won't actually aggro, so you can actually set this up pretty well. Planar Binding will t uh, be able to take over the mind of a otherworldly entity. can be kind of useful, so we're going to take that, but Contagion's good. Or if you want any of these previous spells, feel free to go with that. Once we get that extra wisdom, uh, extra slot from wisdom, we don't really have much that's super useful for it until we get to level 11. Divine Intervention. This is really nice. So you can cast Divine Intervention to invoke your god's aid. Once You can only use it once, can't be used again. You can get a really good weapon from this. I always use it at a certain Act 3 fight that's important to Shadowheart's story. So uh, that's typically when I use it myself. For our cantrip, we can take Light because Cleric's... She's probably going to be like a good aligned cleric at this point. Um, you can even take Greater Restoration or Dispel, Good and Evil, if you really want to. But uh, even Banish. Some people really like Banish, so we'll take that. Now, Cleric Level 11 is when we get our best spells. Uh, so, we get ourselves Planar Ally. This is by far the best cleric spell. Uh, beseech another worldly entity for aid. So, you basically can summon in a Diva, Genie, or uh, Cambion. I highly recommend the Diva. The Diva is just extremely powerful, so we'll go with that. Although you can take Hero's Feast, Blade Barrier is okay. Um, Heal has some unique interactions with the Dark Urge. Harm is okay too. Reduces the ma target's maximum hit points. Um, so you could potentially take a couple of these if you really want to take, like Hero's Feast or Harm. Uh, necrotic damage, 14d6 of Necrotic is okay, but not the best damage. You can really go with one of these that you'd like. Blade Barrier does have some usefulness sometimes for crowd control purposes. And we can take a staff later on. I'm not using the staff, but we can take a staff. that will give us a free cast of a level 6 spell. And then for our uh, final one here, we get to choose another feat if we'd like. But I'm going to show you guys something that's even better. So we can actually add in the wizard. And with the wizard, 
we get ourselves we have to have the intelligence circlet because i dropped our intelligence to eight if you don't have the intelligence circlet stick with 12 levels of the wizard or 12 levels of cleric but we can actually scribe some high level spells because we have the makeup of level six spells so we can literally scribe chain lightning and use oh, it's a 17 that's not the best but if we got a good amount of spell save dc built up it could be pretty good and we also get ourselves Shocking Grasp that fits perfectly on this. Ray of Frost, reduce movement speed. And then I like Minor Illusion myself because you can group people together, create water, and then drop Chain Lightning. For our prepared, or for the spells that we'll select, Shield is one of my favorites. We'll take that. Chromatic Orb, uh, Find Familiar. Witch Bolt, not the best, but it's, it's an option. Magic Missile is really good to take just for guaranteed damage. We'll take Ice Knife and maybe Long Strider for the increased movement speed. We can only prepare one right now, but you're going to see we can actually prepare four of them. So, once we're done leveling here, Shadow Heart's now level 12. <laughs> so, we're going to go into our spell slot. So, you can go under the wizard category. As you can see, we got the ability to learn a few more of these because we got ourselves the Cirque Warped Headband of Intelligence, setting our intelligence to 17. Normally, you can just set this to 16, but it's bit multi attribute dependent. Um, then we can learn any of these scrolls, so we can learn ourselves um, Lightning Bolt, which is a really nice one to have. You can get Chain Lightning if you or where's Chain Lightning? You want to have Chain Lightning. Cone of Cold works really well too, because it's a level 5 spell that's going to benefit from Create Water. You can even take like Globe of Invulnerability is really nice because it doesn't use a spell save DC, and it's honestly a game winner at certain points in the game. So that's another option you can go with. If I had a scroll of Chain Lightning, I would put that on here, but... Uh, yeah, typically what we want to be doing in combat is we want to get our Spirit Guardians up. I'll show you, I guess, the gear first, then we'll get into the combat. So, Warped Headband of Intelligence, if you don't have that, go with the Hood of the Weave for a... Pl or, where is it? Hood of the Weave for plus two spell save DC and spell attack rolls. Cloak Protection, Boots Protection, and Ring of Protection. I just love these three for an increased armor class up to 26. I have the Armor Persistence. This is a late game item, and it's only available to good people. So, if you don't have it... Luminous Armor. The Luminous Armor is really nice. So when you deal Radiant Damage, it causes a Radiant Shockwave, which is crazy. With this weapon here, uh, we can inflict Radiating Orb on the target. These go together really well. So I like the Armor Persistence, obviously, for the defensive buffs that it brings. But you can also just go with the uh, Luminous Armor for all that extra benefit that that brings. I like to theme these, so I usually use like a blue dye on them. So there, she's back to being a Lightning Cleric. I got the Reviving Hands when you heal a creature, it gets Blade Ward, so they'll take half physical damage. So that's really nice. And then also, uh, we got the Amulet of Greater Health to give advantage on Constitution saving throws, which is great. And it sets our Constitution to 23, giving us 134 health. Now, I'm using the Sacred Star in the main hand. This gives you one turn of, one turn of Radiating Orb on hit. And we could also even go with, like, um, the Boots of Stormy Clamor, which is right here and uh, whenever you inflict a condition on the target it gets two turns of reverberation radiating orb counts as one also if you don't want the reviving hand you can go with the um the gloves of the belligerent skies here when you deal radiant thunder lightning or radiant damage you get two turns of reverberation i think that that works really well in this build so we're gonna go with that there and then um boots of stormy clamor works really well too to make it more offensive so we can go that route and uh, still stack up radiating orbs on the target, which is just crazy. And then for the rings, uh, there is a ring here, the Callus Glow Ring. will deal additional two points on targets that are illuminated, so radiating orb will illuminate them. Um, you can also go with the Coruscation Ring whenever we deal spell damage while illuminated by Light Source. Inflict radiating orb on the target for two turns. So that goes more into the full radiating orb build, which is really strong. Um, so I guess I can show you what that'll look like. I'll put that ring on. I like the re ring of regeneration with the gloves. That'll give blade ward because you'll continually have blade ward if you don't have the armor persistence on. And also there's a ring that'll give bless on heal. I'm just not seeing it right now, but I do have it. And the ring that gives bless on heal is really nice too because you can set up the whole team with a mass healing word. So we're going to go with these, I guess... I'll swap that one back on the Coruscation Ring there. And, uh, yeah, we can literally just go in and do, like, melee attacks with this. And it, if we also can do our Divine Strike Thunder, which will do four stacks of reverberation and knock them back. So that's really nice. And Critical Miss. We got Tenacity, so we can still deal damage and still get radiating damage off. So the Divine Strike Thunder is really nice because it can potentially knock people around with that. So... You're not always going to want to be attacking because we do have lots of options. Like, we got Spirit Guardians, which can deal necrotic or radiant damage. 
and that'll set set up your radiating orb so you can go with that there um, we got Glyph of Warding to deal lightning damage on the ground. We got Call Lightning, which is probably one of my favorites because Call Lightning just does a ton of damage. And then you go with the Ch Destructive Wrath there to use your Channel Divinity to deal mass max amount of damage. So it'll do 30 damage there. So that's nice. We were able to take out Jahara. And I guess just to show what's possible with this, um, I guess I can go into my Wizard Spell, scribe these. I'll scribe Lightning Bolt. And then we can... If I had Chain Lightning, it would be a little bit better to show off the capabilities of it. But basically what we'll want to do is we want to create water. I don't see create water here, so I might have taken it off. Um, we'll put that back on there. And uh, you basically want to use create water to set up on the ground here. <clears throat> and that will allow you to deal double damage with your lightning attacks. And then you can drop a lightning bolt there. And then Channel Divinity will deal max amount of damage for 96 damage. That took out Will. It almost took out Halston. Halston does have a prevent, has something that prevents taking extra damage, so it can be really strong. So, um, just I guess another demonstration of that. We'll use our create water here. Uh, you can also upcast create water to make it a larger area, and then you can just go with your lightning bolt here, which is just stupidly strong. So, destructive wrath, boom, 106 damage. We basically were about to take him out, and he ran away. So, that is the strongest build for Shadowheart in Baldur's Gate 3. If you had Chain Lightning, that would be the icing on the cake, so make sure you get a scroll of that from the Sorcerer's Sundries. But, yeah, let me know your thoughts on this build in the comments below. Also, let me know what builds you like to see next in Baldur's Gate 3. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you found this video useful, and if you did, hit that subscribe button below, and I'll see you all in the next video.